Good morning. Um, I had reached out to Pastor Rob about sharing my faith story, and he said to go ahead and write it up and send it over. So I did, and then he asked me to go ahead and share it. So here I am, um, and I'll just hop right in. So as a baby, I was baptized into the Catholic Church. I have many fond memories of that church, as it was a half a block from the home farm in a small unincorporated town called Calamine between Darlington and Mineral Point, Wisconsin. There are five kids in my family, and we lived across the sweet cornfield from my grandma and my uncle Billy. We grew up going to mass on Saturday evenings with my grandma Leone, and at that church they used to have strawberry socials in the summers where we would run wild and get scolded for climbing the trees. Uh, the Saturday night church bells only ring one time a month now in that church. And anytime I hear church bells, I go back to Calamine and I miss my grandma. My grandma was my person. She had a strong faith and one that never seemed to waver. She was raised Lutheran and married into a Catholic family, which in the 1940s was a bit scandalous. And even though I went to church with grandma, I was never put through catechism. The little I know, um, the little knowledge I had of the Bible and study was through the Baptist church in Darlington. I know, odd. A family friend named Aunt Joni, who I was named after, would take me there on Wednesday nights for Bible study. It was very much what I called brimstone and fire. I had a deep wonder and awe of the Bible and all that it meant, and my inability to fully understand it. As I graduated high school and moved on to college, I mostly fell away from that curiosity and one of knowledge as working 40 to 50 hours a week and taking 18 credits at UW-Platteville seemed all-consuming. In my second year of college, I met a man. We dated for three years, and got married the same weekend I graduated from UW-Platteville. Oh, what a weekend. <laughs> My husband and I got married in the Catholic Church. We went through some marriage classes and a little bit of catechism. We never regularly attended church, and I never found a church home. After we were married that May, in October of that same year, my life fell apart as I knew it. My dad, Bill, was in a horrendous work accident that eventually led us to, as a family, to have to make the decision to end life support. It was absolutely heart-wrenching. During this time of loss, the Style Camacho Funeral Home in Darlington assisted my family. Christina, Diego Camacho's daughter, and I were friends in high school, and she and her dad helped my family. After experiencing their help and the solace they gave my family, I felt I had a calling, and I did, decided at that time to become a funeral director. During this time of loss and finding a calling, my marriage deteriorated. My being in school and doing an apprenticeship led to abuse. My mom always says, if a man hits you once on purpose, he will do it again, and he sure did. But it was the unfaithfulness by my spouse to our marriage that eventually led us to divorce. Being a funeral director was an absolute labor of love for me. To be included in others' lives in a capacity that fostered care and kindness and for the allowance of closure meant the world to me. The funeral home that I worked in in Milwaukee was contracted to do all the funerals for the sisters of St. Francis of Assini Catholic Church. Attending these funeral masses and being able to interact with these precious, beautiful women grew my faith. One of my favorite hymns used during the majority of these masses and funerals were, was On Eagle's Wing. This song, from that point on, weaves in and out of my life with so much meaning. I worked in Milwaukee and Waukesha as a funeral director for six years. I eventually left to come back home when my sister, my twin, my best friend, 
was diagnosed with cancer and was struggling. I came home to help. That was in January of 2010. She eventually fully recovered and is strong and healthy today. You sometimes see us here together. And so about that time, I also started a position at Allstate Insurance in Cross Plains. My Tim lived in the apartments across from where I'd go to swing on the swings on my lunch break. I would go and swing on the swings and, and just that's how I got away from work. I know it's odd, I was 26 years old or so and swinging on swings. But um, we should, Tim and I should have collided then. Um, we also probably should have collided when we both were at UW Platteville and in at least one of the same classes or when he opened his checking account at the bank that I worked in, but the timing wasn't right. In May of 2010, it became Oh, I think. We met on a dating website of all places. Our first date, we met at the Scenic Overlook in We met almost my, I'm sorry. He met almost my entire family that day as I didn't know how to do a date anymore. Um, so he met my entire family, and as I didn't know what to do, we ended up with an unplanned gate, um, game day at my grandma's house. And then after meeting my entire family, he called me the next week, which so it signified to me he liked me, because my family can be a lot. <laughs> Our second date was at the Christ Lutheran Church in um, Spring Green. Uh, we went to their pig roast, and um, he had just bought a house in Spring Green that March. Almost every Sunday after that, we attended church together at Christ Lutheran. The people that church are amazing. They wrapped us up and included us in everything. My first day as an official member of that church, I was elected to a board in the stewardship area. I served for two years. This was eye-opening and a great learning experience. We were blessed um, in September of 2012 when we got married in Woodruff, Wisconsin. We just want to make sure that you do not miss a word this woman says. Well, thank you. Okay. All righty. So, so he called me the next week, and then we went to a pig roast. And then um, he bought a house in Spring Green, and almost every Saturday after that, we attended church. The people there are amazing. So Pastor Douglas Larson Sell from that church officiated our wedding in Woodruff, Wisconsin in September of 2012. During our ceremony, when our wedding singer was singing on eagle's wings, American bald eagles flew over our outside chapel. It was kismet and honestly a blatant showing of God's majesty. This was a period of contentment and learning and faith. The concept of grace was solidified for me during this time. My Tim has a quiet, solid faith, which is just him in a nutshell. After a year and more of marriage and heading towards our mid-30s, we were struggling with making the family we wanted. I wanted six children, and Tim was basically good with whatever made me happy. <laughs> Tim's mom, however, stated, one is not enough, Two is good, but three is the absolute limit. <laughs> Through medical help and over two years into our marriage, we conceived twins. We were elated. That was until at 16 weeks of the pregnancy, Tim had his appendix out on a Friday, and that Saturday, I miscarried one of the twins. Sammy, our precious boy. We still had the hope of a child for an additional two weeks, until I then miscarried Andy. Tim was devastated, but was able to move on and maintain his faith. I, however, was not. I went into a dark time of loss. I denounced my faith and cried every day for an hour on the way to 
and then the hour on the way from work to home. I screamed at God. I loathed him. But you know what? He never let me go. The only way I did make it to and from work was the radio. Life 102.5, all Christian music. And even though I denounced my faith, God didn't denounce me, and he held me up. On the day that we had the burial done at St. Mary's um, in Madison, St. Mary's um, is where we delivered, and then they do a mass burial for the babies that are lost um, early. The cello player there played on eagle's wings. Again, God was there. And I didn't get to pick the music. It just happened. Finally, life moved on, and we conceived again. Again, we were elated until we weren't. At our 21-week ultrasound, we found that Matthew, our precious boy, had been caught in the umbilical cord and likely died the day before. I again loathed God, denounced, cried, and I screamed. Life 102.5 held me up again, along with my Tim and his quiet, solid faith. I eventually came around to my faith again via a vivid dream where I saw Jesus, had a conversation. Sorry, I'm dripping. And we had a conversation and got my head on straight and started my faith over again. Tim and I wanted children, and we discussed adoption. We decided to begin that process of fostering to adopt. In February of 2016, we were on a beautiful trip to Destin, Florida to visit Tim's parents. When we got contacted about two little sweeties that needed us, Lexi and Sierra, it was an emergency situation, and they needed placement very quickly. We met them, had a stay over weekend, and then moved in, and they moved in with us permanently in April of 2016. We had two beautiful girls, smart girls. We became almost instant parents. Towards the end of May to early June, I started to not feel well, and lo and behold, I was pregnant. We adopted the girls in November of 2016. The state requires that foster um, children be in your home for six months before you're able to adopt. Otherwise, we would have made it permanent the week they moved in with us. We then had Jameson in February of 2017. We went from zero kiddos to three in less than a year. We were elated. Then in August of 2017, I again wasn't feeling well. We found that I had cancer and then I had gone into heart failure. Again, I felt like God had forsaken me. Why would he allow us to have our dream of children to only make me sick enough that I likely wasn't going to be around long term or be around long term, but be unable to be the wife and mother I wanted to be? Everybody gives me tissues. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I wasn't going to be able to be the wife and mother I wanted to be. And all consuming darkness consumed me. And I convinced myself that my family was better off without me. I had become and was going to be a burden. I was so sick. I made a plan. I sent my girls to school. I took my Jameson to daycare, Tim went to work, and I left the house and was going to end my life. It was a horrible, dark place. It was what I would expect pur purgatory to be like. I could not see past the hurt. I couldn't see past being dealt this blow. I was in the car with all of the meds that I planned on using to end my life when something made me reach out. I called my clinic. And an angel named Carla, who I knew from Spring Green, Christ Lutheran, she talked me down. And I was admitted to UW Hospital and began the process of building back again. I, to this day, fight the demons of those thoughts, of not being the person 
the mom, the wife I want to be, of being so fatigued and tired, the constant up and down of being chronically ill. But back in 2018, our family walked into a church in Black Earth, Wisconsin, called New Heights. Our faith flourished, our family community flourished, our feeling of belonging, our being part of a body of something greater stands us up. The fact that our Jameson, who, and everybody knows Jamie, right? <laughs> cheers on Wednesday mornings about family faith night and that our girls invite their friends, they're the cute redheads back there. Um, they, um, they invite all their friends to everything at the Grove and New Heights, that all lifts us up. My faith story is one of extreme ups and downs. And since 2018, with this faith family, with God's grace, with so many prayers, it grows and it thrives. Looking back over the years now, the Lord, our God, has never forsaken me, has always been there caring and loving. I just need to remember to watch and listen for him. Thank you. And now if you all join me in a prayer. Dear awesome, wonderful, magnificent God, thank you for this day and these beautiful people. Please, Lord, watch over us and guide us in our lives this week. Let us shine love and graciousness over the people and situations we will encounter. Let your church be a light in what seems a dark time in our country. Stand us up and provide all people great peace. Thank you, dear Lord. Amen. <laughs>